This video is brought to you by the lovely guys over at Robotoys. For all your Hasbro, Takara, third party and knockoff desires, Robotoys has you covered. For 10% off, use the code DOCTORLOCK10% off at the checkout. Now on to today's diagnosis. Read the disclaimer! I'm the other one, you bastard! <laughs> Potentially the most important element of setting up a third-party company is carving out a niche. Considering that Hasbro and Takara will be getting far more sales than you, it's important to carve out that special part of the fandom that will stick with you no matter what. Toy World used to be guilty of avoiding such practices, but in recent years they've really huckered down and focused on MPM and sort of 3A styled pieces featuring very accurate sculpts and very detailed paintwork. Iron Factory managed to carve out a niche so strong that it actively altered the trajectory of any and all third-party companies to come. Nowadays, the third-party Legends landscape is forever changed thanks to the efforts of Iron Factory. And don't give me that shit about DX9 being more of an influence than Iron Factory. DX9 didn't put all of their chips in that basket, so Iron Factory was clearly the bigger influence. Planet X continues to deliver solid as hell full of Cybertron designs with a few dips into the RDW-verse. Fans hobby seems to be able to do whatever they damn well please, but they manage to do so with such a striking aesthetic that is so unique to them that anyone will buy it no matter what. And Keith's Fantasy Club has found great success in constantly releasing lackluster figures that piss everyone off, but everyone forgets about it when the next prototype gets revealed. But what happens when a company neglects this decision? What happens when they mishmash aesthetics, scales, character choices, and gimmicks? Well, to answer that question, greeting Cybertronians, I'm Dr. Lockdown, and today's diagnosis pertains to X2 Toys XT011 Giga Raiden. No relation to the Trainbot combiner. Also, no relation to the Mortal Kombat character. Never played Mortal Kombat, not really into fighting games. Don't even know who Raiden is. I'm assuming it's this guy. X2 Toys roots are similarly to many third-party companies, starting off with the ever-popular upgrade kits, coincidentally around the same time DNA design began theirs. They even attempted a more cartoon-style Jetfire, as the Thrilling 31 wasn't exactly what many too accurate collectors were hoping for, as well as the fact that it was also, well, kinda sh**. Nowadays, the X2 Toys version has been completely and utterly outclassed by the impeccable Siege version, but for the time it was rather fun, aside from the face. Repugnus, is that you? For some strange reason though, their version of Jetfire was Titan Master compatible, except instead of doing exactly what Titan's Return did, they decided to make their own version with a shit ton of articulation. This tiny little fellow is the only through line between their recent releases, because the other releases they've done have been pretty unrelated otherwise. Aside from Giga Raiden, they've also combined the Titan Master style with that of traditional third party legends, and made these absolutely adorable teeny tiny bastards. Quite frankly, they're awesome, and honestly I can't wait to review them in a certain end of year marathon that I plan to continue, despite the current worldly predicament. But yes, on first glance, this Optimus Prime doesn't quite seem like it's related to anything whatsoever. Not only does it not appear to resemble anything else X2 Toys has put out prior, but it doesn't appear to have the same Titan Master compatibility either. But take a closer look and boom, there you go, Headmaster port. Pretty nice. Although that's not to say he doesn't have a head of his own though, but let's put that aside for a second, since I am getting ahead of myself. Giga Raiden, or Optimus Prime as I'll be referring to in the remainder of this video, transforms into a vague approximation of a flat-nosed truck that, intentionally or unintentionally, appears to mush conventional Earth truck design with weird and wacky Cybertronian stylings, at least more so than the Siege outing. If you're into hyper-realistic alt modes, I gotta say this figure is 100% not for you. The mantra of this figure, in both modes and throughout the transformation, is to take the traditional Optimus Prime iconography and strip it back to its bare minimum, potentially even more so than the G1 counterpart. It's pretty clear that they chucked the realism out the window with this, as the back of the truck suffers immensely from robot leg syndrome. For those curious as to what the actual back of a truck is supposed to look like, SS38 managed to pull this off quite well. But that's not why you buy Giga Raiden. He is designed to be the most basic of Optimus Prime figures, and I think it's safe to assume that the design is meant for this to be a standalone piece. This is the epitome of a desk toy, designed to keep you company at work whilst your boss argues about which prostitutes to hire using the company's bonus budget that you were supposed to get. Or at least that would have been the case if everyone wasn't stuck at home. Think of this as an involuntary holiday, and forget the concept of time. Just sit back and enjoy more videos. Hopefully from better channels than mine. 
Most of the details on Prime here are facilitated by stickers, and once they're all applied, he does look quite lovely. Obviously, the Autobot symbols are repro labels, and I added them after the fact, but everything else here does work quite well. I especially like the ones on top, which do a lovely job of covering up the exposed joints by distracting you with rivets and faux hinges. The ones at the back of the truck are also quite nice, but I do kind of wish there were more on the side of the cab. As it stands, there's nothing to indicate a window section on the side there, despite the fact they could have easily printed out a sticker to replace the inner section there. Also, and this is a complaint that is a little more pressing, the stickers themselves aren't the most solid. When you place them down, they do seem super durable, but over time they do have a tendency to peel off after moderate transformation. Now keep in mind, it's been over a year since I stickered up this fellow, but when it comes to sticker detail, longevity is one of the most important things. I'm sure I could fix this in the future, and I don't mind stickers as a concept, but if you're a company doing these, please make sure you think about the future. Also, an instruction manual would help as well. Out of the box, there's virtually no way to determine where these stickers go. Fortunately, there's a quite helpful video up on Dime Chalk, so I'll have a link to that in the description. And if that goes down, well, I'll make sure to have a downloaded copy in case it needs re-uploading. And if that still doesn't help, well, I guess we're all f***ed then. Also, I decided to skip the license plate. It seemed a little too self-serving for the company. Maybe I'll make something better myself at a later date. Aside from the sticker details, you also get a nice helping of silver and chrome paint, as well as a few dots of other colours here and there. The silver dots the body with the leg vents, which kinda count as kibble, but whatever. The wheels, which are fortunately pinned, so he rolls exceptionally, the side stripes, which fortunately actually go back far enough, unlike the Siege version, and as a nice touch, mirror the G1 toy, and the window frames at the front. The front window sections are also done in red paint to cover up the clear plastic, which does a very nice job of blending in with the base red, and the headlights up top are picked out in yellow. I would have liked the bottom ones to be painted as well though, because I actually had to go and paint them in myself as you can see, the red sharpie does not stick to chrome well. Maybe the difficulty in painting the chrome parts is why they avoided it though, and as a matter of fact absolutely none of the chrome parts have any extra extra paint on top either. They do look absolutely lovely though, and the chrome is extremely durable. There's virtually no chance of paint chipping on these, even a year down the line. One problem though, none of them are glued in. Yes, gluing them in is a pretty easy affair after the fact, but this is one of the things that should be ready out of the box. Much like Earthrise Starscream's paint chipping, or Earthrise Grapple's pegs, there are certain modifications that you just shouldn't be expected to do as a consumer. Products need to be ready. That said, it's pretty fun to mess with in this mode. It's kind of like if a kid tried to draw the basic outline of Optimus Prime, and then a professional designer took that drawing and made something awesome out of this. I say that with the highest of compliments though, because despite looking pretty derpy in certain places, such as the extremely long grill at the front and the weird midsection, it has a very unique charm to it that not many other figures have. I do wish this charm continued into its weapon storage though, because as it stands, this is pretty stupid. Honestly, it's even dumber than most 5mm peg weapon systems. Size-wise, on its own, this guy may seem like a tried and true deluxe in truck mode, but he's actually quite a bit bigger. This feeling is likely due to the proportions of the windows and how compact everything is. He thankfully doesn't feel like a deluxe though, he's got some excellent heft to him, facilitated by at least five pieces of die cast placed around his body, but I'll get into those as the review continues. Then of course you have to bring him next to this fella. Okay, a little context. This right here is the god-awful Deluxe Optimus Prime from the Classics line. Not the awesome Voyager, the shitty Deluxe. Well, to clarify, this specifically is supposed to be the Special Edition that was put out in 2008, as opposed to the original 2006 release, but that's beside the point. Nobody cares! It's widely hypothesized that the X2 Toys version is supposed to be the spiritual successor to this god-awful toy, but to be honest, I'm not buying it. The transformations are far too different to facilitate such a choice, because the Classics version is much more like a scaled back version of the god-awful hybrid style figure. Huh, that figure keeps coming up on this channel. Furthermore, the scale is completely off. If you're 100% a vehicle mode scale fanatic, which I most certainly am not, and in that case you should probably check out the amazing Lazy Eyebrow Reviewer instead, then it ends up going closer with the Legends class figures that spanned from Thrilling 30 to the end of Power of the Primes. Still, I don't think scale is something you should consider when purchasing this. What we have here is more of a standalone desk toy. Nothing more, nothing less. When this whole disaster is over, it's best to take him along with you to all sorts of officely adventures. Much like the vehicle mode, the transformation follows the mantra of stripping back what one truly knows about Optimus Prime, just to the bare necessities. That results in a very simple, but enjoyable transformation overall. The wheels are on a bit of a tight hinge and they sort of just lock back into there. And I've always wanted to know what an Optimus Prime would look like with the wheels on the backs of the legs, so Props to uh, X2 Toys for delivering something very specific to me in this instance. Although it doesn't really affect my opinion of the toy. Next thing you want to do is bring these panels slightly up, but be careful. Because remember how I said none of the chrome parts were, you know, glued in? 
Well, that applies for the joints as well. As you can see, it just falls right off. In fact, once this review's over, I'm gluing those things in to make sure this never happens again. But if you're very careful, you gently move this up, rotate it 90 degrees, rotate this on the ball joint that acts more as a swivel, 180 degrees, then rotate that and peg it into the side there and bring it down. A bit difficult without the glue, so once you fix that, it should be much easier. And then we do my least favorite part of any transformation scheme, using extending springs. I hate it because these have the tendency to break over time, but it does seem like these ones are very, very sturdy. Like, you really have to give it some effort to pull them out. And as a result, I think these will have a long life ahead of them. Plus, these two joints back here are die cast, so that's probably a plus. Come to the front of the grill section and attach these two bits here. Bring down the legs ever so slightly, which will give you access to this section here, which will unhook from the arms. And then the arms do an optimus, as you do. You got another double hinged die cast joint in there. Bloody brilliant job on that being die cast. You just want to rotate the waist as well. But because that's die cast, what could potentially be the weakest joint in the entire body is now reinforced to the highest degree. The arms slide down on these rails, and typically I hate sliding rails, but this does seem quite durable and done quite well, so kudos. But anyway, we want to come around to the back and bring out the fist, rotate the bumper onto that tab there, probably destroying the red paint that I've put on there in the process, but whatever. Then bring this whole section up and around, and it locks in like so. Open up the legs, then open up these panels here, and that will allow you access to the toes, and then you can close it back up. And last but not least, you want to push the headmaster joint into the chest and bring up the head. Then you close up this double panel here and bring both sides of the double panel around to the back to complete the look. And the end result very much is worth it. It's not the most enjoyable transformation on the planet, but it's simple and it's fun, and I feel that's all it needs to be. Now, personally, when I hear the words Basic Optimus Prime, this is the first thing that comes up. Not because it's the most definitive version of the character, but because it's the most no-nonsense version I've ever had the pleasure of owning, beholding, or reviewing. Just like the mantra held up in vehicle mode and the transformation, the robot mode, with one key exception, gets rid of all the fat and excess that doesn't represent Optimus Prime, and just gives us the bare basics. I don't think any other Optimus Prime on the market has done that to this much extent, whether it being better toys or not. I don't have him in possession yet, but I do believe that to be true even of the Earthrise version. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the closest to basic, no-nonsense Optimus Prime you'll ever get, and that is something quite special to me. The chest gets all the basic details down pat, although a lot of it's done in quite a humorous way. The grill section comes across as even more ridiculous than the vehicle mode, with the chrome dominating the stage and the windows kind of seeming like an afterthought, as if the designers realised, Alright, Prime has windows! The clear plastic on the skirt section looks almost toyetic, but the silver paint surrounding it makes it feel so premium that you can't help but do a double take before chuckling profusely. I'm not insulting the design, by the way. I actually quite like it in this instance. It's hilarious, yet charming. The legs are meaty and hold most of the heft inside them. They've taken the grill section and magnified it to a ridiculous extent, and the result makes the design look about as heavy as it feels. And yes, it is heavy, thanks to the big, fat, chunky die-cast feet, which make up the final two elements of die-cast, and the only two that don't really do much during transformation. The toes are solid plastic, though, which is fine. I don't really see them contributing much to the weight anyway. The arms are basically solid enough. They do have a lot of hinges on display, but thankfully all the truck bits keep to the back of the sleeves. It does kind of look like they were designed backwards though, as if the designers wanted to have the spiky bits facing outwards. The yellow does a nice job of standing out and giving some much needed colour breakout, but I kind of wish he'd also been given the same tamper graphs that the Nemesis Prime version, also known as Dark Raiden, real original, had. Not sure why it was omitted, it would have been a real nice addition. But the real star of show is, of course, the sticker detail. You get quite a few more revealed on the side of the legs, and although they do look lovely, they have the worst peeling out of the entire set. Again, this problem should have been taken into account long in advance. The ones on the inside of the legs have remained solid after all this time, and it's fortunate too because this hidden detail would have to be my favourite. It sits between make toys and fans hobby styles in terms of detailing, and I really wish more designs would incorporate similar design cues on the inside of the legs, as opposed to the traditional pistons and stuff. 
Don't get me wrong, pistons are fine, but this is also nice. Overall, it's a very nice design, but I do feel they fell short on the most important element, the head sculpt. Many will agree that the head sculpt is the main element of any robot mode, as it's what the human mind identifies with when looking at a real person anyway. I don't know what the problem is, but the design feels almost a little bit bloated. It's got everything an Optimus Prime should, and like the rest of the figure, aside from the lights, it's painted impeccably, and from certain angles it does look serviceable, but when taking it straight on, yeah, something's up. The head is fixable though, more or less. Remember how I mentioned the Headmaster compatibility earlier? Well, just fold away the head and use the connection port on the top and bam, you've got pretty much any Headmaster head at your disposal, budget permitting. I get X2's toys obsession with Titan Masters and cores and whatever they wanna do, but if they're really hell-bent on making a standalone Prime that doesn't really work with anything, then the inclusion of this piece seems odd. But hey, if you hate the head sculpt more than I do and don't mind the parts forming head, then go find something on Shapeways and go nuts, I guess. If I had to complain about anything else, the Matrix is far too small. Yeah, I get it, Matrix cavities are hard to do and often the Matrix remains undersized due to the issues of mass shifting. But Jesus f Christ, this is way too small! What is this? Matrix. For ants! You can also remove the Matrix from the cavity, but... Trust me, don't. You'll, you'll just lose it. On the topic of losing things, the ion cannon that's customary for most Optimus Primes is also far too small. I'm not saying that Hasbro have been any better in the past few years, as they've been messing up even further in some instances. <laughs> but honestly, this looks like they took the G1 version and skewed it sideways in Photoshop. He honestly doesn't even hold it that well, relying on the friction of the knuckle joint to keep it in place. There really should have been a tab or a slot in there somewhere. In fact, it does actually tab into a slot on the backside, in a style similar to most Gunpla, if they really were able to do that, as stupid as it may seem, then including a tab for the hand seems like child's play. Honestly, massively missed opportunity. Also, yes, it does come with missiles, but of course I've lost them. Don't criticize me, we've all done it. Crikey! It's the portal! The one where all the missiles go when they get lost under the couch. I'd probably best stay away from it. You'll probably get me stuck. That said, these issues don't overshadow the immensely solid design overall, and when you bring in the articulation into the mix, you quickly stop worrying about such fickle things. The head is on a ball joint that gets you a smidge of side to side, but virtually no up and down. Fortunately, the hinge for transformation well and truly makes up for it, and I suppose if you're using a headmaster, you get the same kind of articulation you'd usually expect from that as well. The shoulders on universals, and they have an extra backward hinge due to transformation. The bicep swivels with absolutely no clearance or tolerance issues, and the elbows get you well beyond 90. Looks pretty damn natural too, a feat not many robots can pull off. The wrists feature a hinge and a ball joint, allowing for a lot of motions, and the hands can open, although it doesn't quite look natural in my humble opinion. In the chest, he has a double-jointed die-cast hinge due to transformation, and it acts as an unhampered ab crunch. If that wasn't good enough, it's above the waist swivel, so it allows for an extra level of torso articulation, even if it does look a little unnatural from certain poses. Mega props for making that joint die-cast. I've said it before in the transformation segment, but it's a really smart decision. The hips are on universals, and although they get no backward motion due to the design of the waist, the forward motion is utterly crazy in how far it goes. The thighs also swivel without issue. The knees are single jointed, but they get you well beyond 90. And finally, he has an almost 90 degree ankle tilt. Honestly, whilst some of the elements of this design articulation wise are really pushing it to its limits, others are just average. Still, it's well above the standard for most action figures of this size, and it's hella fun to mess with thanks to the expertly done tolerances. Size wise, this is where the height starts getting a little weird. He's way beyond the typical size of a deluxe, and way shorter than any Voyager on the planet. I'm sure one person out there will be blown away that X2 Toys made the perfect Optimus Prime for them specifically, but for everyone else, again, you're not really buying this Prime for a specific scale. You're buying it as a singular desk toy. It's an Optimus Prime that's trying to be an Optimus Prime and nothing else. It aims for a little above the standard and surpasses that by a small margin. So as far as successful designs go, yeah, I do think this is one of them. But the question still remains, is Giga Raiden specifically a successful product? Well, Yes and no. Short term, definitely, they managed to catch a lot of the Optimus Prime collectors, similarly to Make Toys Cross Dimensions line, and as a figure on its own, it's bloody brilliant. But long terms, unlike the Cross Dimensions line, it continues to muddy the waters of this company because they are very inconsistent with what they are trying to do. Now I forgot to say this in the script, but one thing that evidenced such a failure was the fact that they had planned a few upgrade kits for this and a completely new trailer, and of course none of them came to fruition for obvious reasons. Also I think another factor that contributed to the failure of this piece was the price, because at the time, and even now, it was still 75 Aussie dollary dues, and that's a bit much. That's not the fault of the sponsor, that's just the fault of the company overpricing their figures, but hey, what can you do? 
Don't get me wrong, there's not much wrong with this figure, and most third-party aficionados will agree it's a fantastically made product. But when you want to create a brand icon, you need to be consistent in what you put out. So even though this may have sold well in the short term, long term it may be doing more harm than good. When you're the jack of all trades, even if you manage to be the master to all of them, the fan base may still consider you as master to none. But as a figure on its own, it's hella fun, and once this disaster is over and you just want a desk toy, I highly implore you to pick one of these up. And of course, when it comes to receiving such a figure, I have to thank today's sponsor, Robotoys. Robotoys is an Australian Transformers store that has had impeccable delivery times even in this global catastrophe. In fact, as I record this, I'm still getting the Seacons that I've ordered. Bloody brilliant! You can use the code DOCTORLOCK 10% off at the checkout for a one-time 10% off discount on a single purchase. I still think it's a bloody miracle that Sendal's operating in all this situation, but hey, Robotoys has always been great on delivering the goods, and I think they will continue to be. Now keep in mind, it has been over a year, and they are out of this particular item. But it's very likely that as X2 Toys continues to finally find its identity, well, if it does, Robotoys will be there to assist. But anyway, I think that closes the case on why it ended up so high on my top Transformers of 2018 list. And now that that's over... I'm going to stick it back on the shelf, where it has been for the past year, and where it will continue to be.